The stretches you need are long, straight drives. Flexibility has to be a focus if you want to improve on the course. In part one, we looked at technically how to improve your posture, rotation, and speed so you can hit those long, consistent drives. And the work we're gonna do today with static and dynamic options is gonna help you get your body in those positions to make technical changes easier, to make golf effortless and powerful when you tee it up. We want to help you with your health and your fitness. So once you combine the technical with the stretching, we want to get you in the gym. We got levels for every single golf. I'm gonna show you exactly how to get it done in part three. Make sure you check it out. First, we're gonna get flexible. Starting with the two static stretches you need right now. Number one is the lying separation. It's about moving the upper and lower body in different directions at the same time which is a huge part of your swing, again, for your rotation and your speed. So take yourself a lying position, get comfortable. You're gonna bring the leg up and then rotate over the other side of your body. Okay, in this position, place your hand behind the knee, big breaths in through the thoracic spine, bring your arm up to the sky, and then stay nice and loose. You're gonna rotate and bring the arm, taking big deep breaths as far around as possible. Okay, so what you're gonna find is, if you can use that breath work, you're gonna increase the range, you're gonna sit into it, you're gonna feel it real nice through the lower back as you separate the upper and lower body. All right, and static stretching, you gotta make sure your breathing is good, you gotta let the muscles relax. The extra length is gonna help, but making sure it's functional is a huge deal, guys. All right, so you're gonna hold this at least 30 seconds each side, should be 60 even starting out. When you bring it up, bring that leg back to center, and then return to the other side. All right, always work both sides. It's gonna feel really good. Lower back, up to your thoracic. It's gonna get the body where it needs to be for rotation, all right? Speaking of thoracic, second static stretch. All right, we're gonna need a golf club and some kind of platform, okay? So this is gonna be the raised prayer hold, okay? And this one is huge for your posture, all right? So we're talking about those three factors. Posture, far too often, we're driving, we're on the computer, our shoulders are getting rounded, it really limits your movement. This is gonna help you go the other way, okay? So in a kneeling position, put your elbows on your platform, palms up, and holding the club gives you a really good guide. From here, get a decent distance away, Set down, let your hips sit back towards your heels, and then you're gonna get into that really nice upper body position. So you're getting some spinal extension. Big deep breaths again. You're gonna feel it right through the middle of the back. You're in a nice position. You can look up a little if you choose to, but you're gonna sit deep, let the body go into that position. Instead of being rounded, you'll create an awesome posture. And again, it feels really, really good at this point. All right, so sit back as far into your heels as you can do. Let your head go between your arms. And again, minimum 60 second hold here as you work into that T-spine and up through the shoulders. All right, so two movements, super simple. Static stretching is important, but it is not effective on its own, guys. All right, if you want to make some progress, you got to go dynamic. Dynamic. This is where you start to see some real progress, all right? Because functionally, you can use these pans into your swing alongside the static where we're actually lengthening the muscles and getting you that range of motion. All right, so number one is an excellent option for the hips, all right? Hugely important area. Posture, rotation, speed. If your hips can't function correctly, if your posterior chain isn't going to, we lose all of those elements, all right? So this is a three-step hip opener. Again, you can grab your club, 
Balance out in front, create excellent posture and core engagement. From here, we're gonna go into this split stance lunge position. You are going to go deeper into that forward position. So we're gonna go into a forward lunge, hold for about five seconds at the end range of motion. You're gonna feel it real nice in that trail hip flexor and opening up through the front leg. You're then gonna step back to center and out to 45 degrees. Again, lunge into that position. We're getting the rotation around the hip as well as that stretch on the trail side. Five seconds at end range, back to the center and then out to 90 degrees. All right, so make sure this one feels comfortable. We're creating a lot of range at the hips. We go wider, you might feel some tension on the inside or on that trail side. Either way, this is working, guys. All right, so from here, we step back to center, go to 45, go deep, try and breathe, maintain your posture, don't collapse every single time. We stay in a good position, back and then through to the center. All right, you can repeat this cycle three times each side, so that would be six steps as you go. And again, always work both sides of the body, okay? So that one is huge for opening up the hips and creating awesome movement through the middle of the body. Second up is gonna be the seated torso rotation, okay? So posture is incredibly important. Again, if you slouch when you're sitting down, you're not gonna get any rotation. So sit up, shoulders back, nice positioning, and then you're gonna take your club, across the shoulders. All right, really simple. We need our feet flat to the ground. You wanna be at a height where your hip is pretty close to level with your knee. From here, taking those big deep breaths, we're gonna rotate the torso. The eyes can go with it. A little bit of a hold at the end range, back to center, and then work the opposing side. You will feel a difference from right to left. It's very unlikely that as a golfer, with the asymmetrical movement that you'll feel the same both ways. So, push yourself through to that end range of motion, breathe at the top, and keep on gauging how far you have turned, okay? So you can put something along the ground if you want to gauge your distance, but really, the best way to check is that the end of the club is gonna go past the knee of the side you are turning from, all right? So I turn to my right, we're getting that club past the left knee, I turn to my left, we're getting the club past the right knee, okay? So again, multiple reps, multiple sets, because now we're dynamic, we don't need to hold as much. We wanna be flowing through that movement, observing progress, and continuing to move more and more. Finish out this dynamic set, we have the split stance T-spine rotation, okay? This one is a winner. Whether you're warming up to go to the gym, you're on the range to get moving, or you just wanna get something that helps the body all the way through, this is the one, guys. All right, so we're back into that split stance. Really, we're combining the hip stretch and the glutes with the rotation. So you're hitting all those factors of posture, rotation, and speed, all right, because we're gonna rotate around the spine. From here, front foot is gonna be balanced. You're gonna put your opposing hand down, and ideally, you're gonna take that trail knee off the ground, okay? It can stay down for stability if needed. If you can push it up, a little bit more glute engagement, that's always a positive. You're now gonna reach the opposing arm under your chest, so you already get some rotation. Then up and around, nice flow, creating at least 90 degrees of turn, and then work through some reps, okay? So keep that front foot solid to the ground, really wide angle of rotation, working around the spine, creating a nice flow, and stretching out the hips at the same time, okay guys? Let's go 20 reps on each side as a minimum. These three things you can do anywhere. You can do them whilst you're watching this video. Every single day, they will improve your swing. They will improve your body. And that gives you the ability to improve your driver's swing, hit it further, be more consistent as we head into that 23 season, guys. All right, we're gonna jump in right now and show you exactly how much difference they can make. building you that powerful, effortless swing so you can rip your driver when you get to the course this season. And we're looking at posture, rotation, and speed, guys. All right, so in terms of your flexibility, we need to be able to stay in position so you can retain posture and deliver the club the same way each time. All right, so if we want to deliver the club 
the same way, our body needs to be able to replicate those positions and be able to maintain position as you create force. Right? You think about early extension, you stand up out of the shot, and you're blasting it right all day long. Okay, that's where the hip mobility comes in, the glute activation, all huge, all right? Rotation, think about those seated torso rotations, think about how we move the upper body. If we can't get to a full shoulder turn, it's unlikely that the club is gonna get behind the body, and as soon as it stands up out here, that's our slice through, all right? Because from that tall position, we're out to win almost always, that means the face is gonna be open to the path, and it's gonna go slicing off in the way that you don't want it to. So you can see there, the club never got behind my body. We were eight degrees across, so we're hitting out to in, across the ball. That's our slice, guys, all right? That's a pretty bad one. That's gonna cause you trouble all the way through. All right, and that's where that flexibility comes in, because if we cannot create enough shoulder turn, enough body rotation around the hip, to get the club behind us, it's very difficult to create that in to out path, guys, right? So I'm gonna show you two one of those now. And you think about speed, that's where the training comes in. So make sure you check out next, the part three with the workouts. But also, the more we turn the body, the more we rotate, the further the club travels, we lengthen the arc, and then once we factor everything in, the sequence in, that's where you have the potential for effortless power, guys, all right? So here, if I think back to the drill from the range, if I get that mobility working, and now I create that full shoulder turn, we can see the club work from the inside. Hopefully we're gonna get those launch factors for a long straight drive. Not so much, a little thin on that one. So, we came from the inside, 3.4 in. Just got that bad strike after hitting that slice for it. Let's work on another one. You can see there, there's a very big difference. It's something that a lot of golfers need to really factor in. The slice, the one that we want to get away from, the club goes across, the ball starts left for the right-handed golfer, and then works off to the right. That's the bad swing, all right? When you're practicing, when you're working on these drills, if the ball goes to the right, but doesn't fade as much, it's more just that straight push, you're actually making progress. And you can see that right there. That was three degrees from the inside. I just left the face up into the path, and we didn't hit a very good one. But if you get that path there, and we rotate the face, then we got something. That was pretty much where we need it to be. That's the one we've been waiting for, guys, all right? So there, we've got that full shoulder turn, we've got the pressure against the ground, so we've got that glute activation. My hips could maintain position, so we didn't early extend. Four degrees from the inside, a little bit of face closure. We get that powerful draw, guys, right? 313 carry, 345 total. Whether you're at that distance or not, you can gain distance with what we are working on here, guys, all right? So now we're gonna show you the best warm-up possible. It's gonna take you five minutes, do it right there on the course, and it will help you play better golf. This is my perfect five-minute on-course warm-up, all right? I do this every time I play, whoever's around, I'm getting this in as a minimum, guys, right? Again, it's gonna factor into your posture, your rotation, and your speed. This is how you improve all three in a few minutes so that when you first hit those shots, your body's gonna be ready to go. Movement number one, real simple, is gonna be 30 dynamic windmill rotations. Really wide with the feet, set with just a slight bend of the knee. We're gonna hinge at the hip, again, working on that posture. You're then gonna touch your right hand down to your left foot, and then dynamically, left to right, right to left, work your way through the reps. So here, I'm keeping that slight bend of the knee. I'm keeping the neutral spine. We're creating a big wide arc in our rotation. A little bit of speed, so we increase the heart rate. And as you work through those reps, the glutes are working, the rotation is improving, and that is exactly what you need to get them started, okay? Movement number two will be 20 reps of a lunge with club hold rotation, okay? So shoulder width apart, arms length, you're gonna step out into a lunge, stabilize the lead leg. When you do, rotate over that lead side. Step back to standing, opposing side, opposing rotation. So again, everything moving, 
you're feeling the body work, you're getting that lower body asymmetry. So you've got that stability and all the muscles are firing up whilst we then separate the upper and lower body. Everything you need in your swing to get yourself going. That's one of our favorites. Gets it done every single time. All right, from there, 10 reps of the challenging lateral lunge. All right, so again, we're gonna use the club here for a bit of additional balance. You're gonna raise up, then lunge out to the side, hit that position, push against the ground, and then balance at the top. So push and balance. So this gets everything working. You're getting the mind working. Your footwork is improving every single rep and you're still activating those lower body muscles where so much of the power in your swing comes from. All right, always work both sides, but it feels like you step in, hit, and go. That little bit of reactionary force, huge for your game. And in just three movements, we prep the body, muscles are active, we're using the ground, we're creating rotation. That is how you warm up. You should do it every single time you play.